Good. We're good. We're good. Okay. Hello everyone, F and D here again, TSL PDC. What's doesn't the work, acronyms? <laughs> A little B, a little uh, S and M for your BSDMM. <laughs> okay. LOL. <laughs> How's everybody doing? We're gonna start doing. You know what, Darren? Everyone requested this from us, didn't they? A lot of yeah. people did. They wanted to know. I think it's because we did uh, the Sammy Kerr movie. Um, what Trick is or it, treat. Well, trick or treat. And that was all metal. And uh, everyone's like, we want to know your favorite uh, movie tunes. And the horror movies, and we're like, you know what? Let's do something like that. We know Chester Franklin's a big fan into music, and he's our go-to guy. Anytime we have a question about a soundtrack or a composer, he knows his shit. He does. Good old so, Chester. Good old Chester A. Franklin. Shout out to him. Yeah. Um, so we decided, Darren and I, to put this together. We did our ten favorite songs in horror movies i don't think a lot of some of them are not metal but they're just songs right they're not in any particular order either i don't think i think most of mine are oh <laughs> i think that the two go hand in hand don't they a lot of the time horror sure and metal. sure but can't some songs be just creepy anytime you hear them oh yeah a particular that's how i went too um so let's let's start right away um okay you're number 10 okay so my number 10 um and these I, songs in horror movies, I don't mind. I'm not a big fan, and this comes from Dave as well. He, when you watch a horror film and the end credits hit, I don't want the latest Rat song or Night Ranger song blasting on the end credits. I kind of don't like that. I like to, I like the end credits to have a, a, a kind of eerie, uh, uh, to, you know, bit of the score, just to kind of so you can soak the movie up you're kind of i'm kind of distracted scream does it a lot of the time doesn't it that's you know what i'm gonna do a jeff goblin here for a moment and go ah yes yes uh, 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 uh. You, you are correct you you, you are correct because <laughs> uh, i was gonna put that on my list the e pop song from uh freddie's dead but that was a credit song yeah, uh, yeah. so i didn't put that all my all my songs and it's a good thing that you just pointed it out yeah this is why you picked me I be your partner the, in this. The only exception is I've got a couple of songs on there that come in on the end credits after a kind of outro piece of music, if you like. Okay. Okay. So that so that's allowed, I think. Okay. Um so number uh number ten for me would be and I'm not a fan of this movie, and a lot of people have asked us to cover this, and we will get round to it sometime, is Rob Zombie's Halloween. I I like the music in rock. I think the score's decent, but mm -hmm. I also like the rock tracks that he uses throughout the film. I think he uses some Kiss. He uses some uh, Moody Blues, doesn't he? I think in mm -hmm. in in one of the scenes. And also, uh, there's a scene where Michael is kind of sat outside the house as a kid, and his mum's at work. She's the stripper, of course, at the Rabbit and Red Lounge, and he's sat on the the doorstep of the house with a mask and a pumpkin. And the song from Nazareth, Love Hurts, is playing. And I think that really goes well with that scene. You know, kind of that, that, that you get to see what his mum's doing and what he's doing and the sort of, you know, the kind of messed up life that they have. Um, uh, yeah, so Nazareth's Love Hurts in Rob Zombie's Halloween is my, my, my number 10. Could you imagine when he broke out of um, the sanitarium? Now, not the director's cut, the theatrical cut, which is a lot better. Yeah, that he, he was playing "Don't Be Messing with the Son of a Bitch" from Nazareth, <laughs> yeah, you know, as he's killing everybody. That would have been great, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? Uh, my number ten uh, gets me dancing, just like the character does uh, in the movie American Psycho, and that is Huey Lewis in the news, hip to be square. <laughs> oh, that's uh, good. And he's just he's just going out and <laughs> dancing just before he kills, just before Batman kills the Joker. Yes, exactly. <laughs> 
it, Christian Bale and um, Jared Leto. Yeah, yeah. So hip to be square. Uh, yeah, and uh, he's uh, it's just playing. And he's listening to it uh, throughout the movie. Uh, but I forgot how great that song is. Hmm. Um, plus, you know, everyone thinks when they think of Huey Lewis and News, it's uh, the heart of rock and roll. Uh, yeah, or, or the Back to the Future song. Or Back to the Future. But yeah. I think uh, Huey Lewis had a problem with this song being in this movie. And the initial uh, pressing of the soundtrack came out with Hip to Be Square on it. And then he said, take it off. I'm offended. And the next pressings came. It doesn't have Hip to Be Square on it. Um, but it's, it oh, fits. I didn't know that. It, it fits because perfectly. I'm- I read the book American Psycho years oh, ago. Doesn't and, uh, fit with this movie. Well, it, it, well, I don't know, but I think I seem to remember him being obsessed with like eighties kind of music like that, and it, it and Huey Lewis. I seem to remember him being referenced in the book. Now, maybe that he was expecting that perchance some of his music might appear in the film, and that's why he got um, the ass with it. Yeah, um, but. It's yeah. The book is something else, isn't it? I don't know if you've ever read it, but it's um, yeah. The, the, uh, it almost feels like that film was unfilmable if they were going to really stick to what happens in the book. But um, yeah, that's a good song. Yeah, I th- I, I'm gonna, I'm actually going to correct myself. I think he's actually listening to it. He's not. He's not locked him off. I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, folks. But mm. I think that's the. Uh, I know "Hip to Be Square" is definitely in it. Um, but also, uh, on a side note, isn't Huey Lewis the name of Borat's son? Was it? Yes. In the recent film? Uh, the uh, the first one, uh, uh, when he came to America. <laughs> My son, Huey Lewis, uh, the, he shows the picture, and it's this man with this large schlong that he's showing to <laughs> oh, the uh, etiquette girl. To the lady. <laughs> This is my Didn't son. Maybe have a mustache as well, or something. Uh, like this, this is my son, Huey Lewis, <laughs> <laughs> and it's him right next to a big penis going <laughs> in a Polaroid. Well, let's let's move on. We, we yeah, can't yeah, be talking yeah. about this. Okay, you're number nine. <laughs> um, the Cramps and Surfing Dead from uh, Return of the Living Dead. That's a kind of fun song. Uh, it goes well with the sort of tone of the movie. Um, it's 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 kind of a uh, I think it's a montage sequence mm-hmm. where there's all sorts of different zombie attacks going on, and it really lightens the mood and kind of softens the violence. Um, it's a great <laughs> it's a great song, I think, and uh, one that's really really memorable from that film. That and the trioxin opening sequence with the that's an instrumental piece, but that's that's another um, part of the score. Um, but that and the um, the cramp surfing dead and and obviously and the other one is do you want a party I can't remember who sang yeah. that now yeah. um, who sang that who knows who cares <laughs> never mind <laughs> they'll correct us that's okay yeah. <laughs> I always got to remember in part two uh, Dare when Frank's ready to burn himself you hear burn <laughs> that's part <laughs> one a, it's a part one yeah that's, yeah when that's he gets right. into the incinerator the crema- yeah the crematorium yeah burn yeah. and it's a song. <laughs> But yeah, I agree with you. That's a great song. My number nine, uh, most people probably say, why would you pick that? But you know what? It was the first soundtrack uh, album I bought, and that's from Halloween 6, Brother Kane and Fools Shine On. Uh, I, I love wow. that song. I love it. Which scene is that in? Is that the it's, DJ? That- it's when they're setting up for the town festival. Yeah. And, you know, you hear Brother Kane come on, you know, and it's the, the soundtrack and Fools Shine On, which is also the song playing for the trailer. Okay. I have no idea who that is. Brother King. Who's Brother that? Kane. Kane. Oh, Kane. Like Kane and Abel. Yep. Like- <laughs> and Fools Shine On. It's pretty good. I like Very it. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> You're number eight. Um, I'm going to go with um, an end credit song, but it's an end credit song after the music, and that is um, Ghost Hunter's Moon mm-hmm. from Halloween Kills. I'm a huge Ghost fan, and um, I-, I saw them for the first time about, I guess, around about 10 years ago. I didn't know what to expect at all, just these crazy blokes dressed as priests and, uh, you know, playing all this kind of prog-type 
Doom or whatever Before you were. Before they were know, uh, worldly popular. Yeah, yeah. This was at a festival on a small stage. And then fast forward 10 years, and they're, they're making these great sort of pop rock albums and selling out arenas. And Hunter's Moon, the first song that they made that was kind of, uh, I guess, telling everybody that we're now going to do some sort of, you know, some sort of pop rock music. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they'd done things like Rats beforehand, but um, yeah, it, uh, the, the latest Ghost album is absolutely tremendous. And um, it's kind of that turn in their career, like when Def Leppard made the Hysteria album and decided that they were going to go a very commercial route. And it's fun. I like it. And the, the, I saw them live recently, and they were fantastic. So good old Ghost and Hunter's Moon. Excellent, excellent. It's a catchy tune. It, it really is. is. It it's is. It's catchy. It fits well you, with, the, with the movie. And that's why you stay for the end of the credits. Yeah, uh, yeah. Even though you know nothing's going to happen. You just That song just keeps you in your seats. Yeah. Uh, my number eight is Ozzy Osbourne in Hellraiser from Hellraiser 3. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> is that out of your list, too? It's not him. Oh, it's, yeah, it's Lemmy. It's Lemmy. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Ozzy sings it. <laughs> Lemmy wrote it. No, uh, Lemmy sings it. No, damn it. Uh, he, damn it. Damn you. He sings it. Ladies Ozzy, and gentlemen. Ozzy Osbourne sang it on his No More Tears album. Ozzy and Lemmy wrote the song. And yes. then when, when it came to the movie, Lemmy recorded a version and put that out on the movie and then last year it was the 30th anniversary of that song and they did a mix of the two of them singing the vocals going backwards and forwards okay but ozzy osbourne from hellraiser part three right well i'll have ozzy, i'll have lemmy from Lemme. hellraiser part three both then. metal gods though I'm both gonna, metal I, gods I, I, I'm gonna, is, I, shut up i'm gonna put <laughs> I'm going to play the video from this film now. Watch. All right. I, I, okay. I stand to be correct. <laughs> and let me show you my video. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll, we'll both agree that it's Ozzy and Lemmy. Hellraiser. <laughs> Hellraiser 3 for that movie collaboration. Yes. Okay. We'll do that. It Fuck is you. technically Ozzy's song. Yes. But okay. but Lemmy recorded it for Hellraiser 3. There you, so, there you go. All right. Yeah. The shit. <laughs> are we out of our system? <laughs> are we still friends? Continue. Where are we now? It's Kelly, fine, isn't it? Take care of him. Yes. Uh, you're number seven. <laughs> um, we talked about this a few weeks ago and still one of my greatest uh, songs in a movie ever. And that's Tim Capello's um, I Still Believe from Lost Boys. Um, cheesy as hell. Um, the best oil? beach, <laughs> yeah, the best beach party in the world. The best party in the world. It looks mm. like. Um, and so every time that moment comes on, you just you just kind of sit back and and have fun with it. It's it's a it's a cheesy moment in a great cheesy film, cheesy eighties movie, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's incredibly memorable. And good old Tim Capello still dining out on it these days, isn't he? Owning up to it. it. Oh, yeah. You know, owning it completely. Yeah. Going around all the um Do you do festivals. the hip thing? Do you try to do that? Uh, uh, not that you can see. <laughs> 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 Being in a cage. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Just all oiling up before. <laughs> I can't do the, I can't do like the little ponytail. I don't think you and I could do the ponytail at all. I could ponytail my beard. I could, if I tried to grow a ponytail, it would just go like that. Yeah. <laughs> just let your soul glow. Um, <laughs> I think for me, my number uh, seven is going to be the Cordettes and Mr. Sandman. That's an interesting one. Now, it wasn't in not only in the end of credits of H uh, two. We're not. I'm not pointing that out. It was also in Halloween six. Uh, when she turned down the car after finding John and his friend were uh, loose on the town. And he, she turned down the uh, the car, and that song came on. She sat and just stared at it. And everyone's like, oh, it's a little Easter egg. But God damn it, didn't we do this before when we said, if the audience knows a connection between characters or the movie that the characters aren't supposed to know within themselves, it makes us feel a little special. But when... 
Lori calls Michael the shape or recognizes Mr. Sandman. It just ruins it for us. <laughs> That's only something we're supposed to know. Stop Isn't it, it in... Um... I think it's in H two O. Yeah, that's what H two O. H two O. Yes, H two O. Yeah. Uh, so it's in H six as well, is it? I'm sorry, it was H H two O. You're yeah. correcting yeah. me again. You know your music there better than me. <laughs> uh, yeah. So H two O. You know, she sits there and she looks at the, uh, you know, at the radio. It's like no, but that's from H two. Mm. You're not supposed to know that's Mr. Sandman, but you recognize it now, just like you calling him the shape in H eighteen. F- you. Isn't it Taking the moment everything. where the pumpkin gets sliced up at the start? It is the opening track and closing track for Halloween 2. Yes. And it's the opening track for H2O in the beginning with the slicing of the pumpkin mm-hmm. and when Lori listens it to the radio mid-second act okay. of H2O. It's settled. Let's move on. <laughs> Because uh, Halloween H uh, Halloween eighty one it opens up with Mr. Sandman too. Yeah, of course it does. To, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We yeah. all know that. Yeah, yeah. You, you didn't until I told you. Okay, uh, your uh, <laughs> your part six. We're taking the piss out of each other today. Folks. Okay, right. Okay, where am I now? Okay, there is a film called Cold in July, uh, directed by a guy called Jim Mickle. Which stars John Don jo- John Donson, Don Johnson, Dong John- <laughs> Dong Johnson, Don Johnson. <laughs> Michael C. Hall and Sam Shepard. And it's although it's not technically a horror film, it's a kind of movie that's sort of a home invasion to begin with. And the uh, the guy who lives in the house accidentally shoots dead the assailant, and then he gets caught up in all sorts of um, trouble with the uh, family members of the guy mm-hmm. that he shot, and, and, and it kind of snowballs from there. It's a really, really tense, atmospheric, quite scary film that that the, the filmmakers and the person who did the score um, was really heavily influenced by John Carpenter. Um, and there's a song in there called Wait by White Lion. Which is a big hair metal track. Uh, and it fits really perfectly with this film. Um, White Lion. White Lion, yeah. Wait, wait. <laughs> so, yeah, Wait by White Lion in the movie Cold in July, which is a really underrated thriller. Um, not technically a horror film, but because it has all these Carpenter influences in there and uh, with the score and the, the mood and the setting and everything, I just thought I'd sling it in there because the, the Wait White Lion song really fits perfectly within that film. There was, uh, back then in the 80s, there was uh, bands calling themselves White Something all the time, right? Great White. White Lion, Great White, White Snake. Jesus. <laughs> Think of another one. Uh, yeah, I actually know White Lion. A bit like 80s band. You know, it was. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. They're, they're fun. Yeah. Uh, mm. I got to check that movie out. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to listen to the song. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, my number six is uh, is a creepy song when it first came out. By a creepy singer, uh, before the even this creepy movie came out, and had his tiny Tim's tiptoe through the tulips from Insidious. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a perfect song for this movie. And the one part now, I don't really get freaked out by movies, but when I heard tiptoe through the tulips, and then that little boy dancing, holy shit, Darren, it creeped me out. <laughs> And then, but you hear this movie played by the uh, is it the Devil Demon? You know, he's he's sharpening his, yeah. his nails and stuff, and tiptoe through the tulips, and he's uh, yeah. But uh, Tiny Tim's tiptoe through the tulips from Insidious. Okay. My that's a good God. one. They, it's, it's, sometimes there's movies uh, that that you have a kind of either old track like that, which can be really haunting in a horror mm-hmm. film, or kids singing, yes, la, 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 all that kind of stuff. Um, the Amateurville horror that yes. that score in that film with those kids kind of singing in the la, background. La, 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 la. <laughs> yeah, la, 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 la. It sounds like the Smurfs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and also Argento did a lot of that stuff as well. You know, in movies like Deep Red and stuff, where they yeah. really kind of old tune that would 
signify the killers around or something like that. It's the a, omen. Yeah, it's a, well, the, the omen. A lot of chorus. Yeah, yeah, a lot of choir music oh, in there. Oh, oh, oh. It's like Jesus. <laughs> Rod, if I hear a, that. That's the old Spice advert, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, my next one would be. Well, you've stolen it. It was Hellraiser by uh, Motorhead. Okay. From Hellraiser Three: Hell on Earth. Um, so we, let's have another <coughs> look at. Let's have another. <laughs> let's have another look at Lemmy singing Hellraiser from Hell on Earth. Fake news. Now do you believe me? <laughs> yes, I believe you. I believe they collaborated. Okay, your next one. Okay, my next one is by uh, Jack T. E. Garden. Uh, Jeepers Creepers from the movie Jeepers Creepers. Oh, that old again. That's when we could have. Yeah, yeah. That's a, uh, that's uh, a really old gramophone record, isn't it? You I know, think. it's almost like taking um, uh, the song uh, "Midnight" from um, The Shining, mm. and it's these songs that are supposed to be, you know, about love that are just twisted in these horror movies. It's supposed to bring out uh, every time you hear this song, your impending doom, like you said. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's I had to put Jeepers Creepers in there because mm. it's part of the movie. Uh, when the uh, psychic said, "You hear that song, you run," because that means this thing is coming at you for your mm. eyes. Yep. <laughs> for everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know what? We're not even going to do fucking numbers anymore, ladies and gentlemen. You know, <laughs> your next one, Darren. <laughs> um, my next one would be um, Sister Christian by Night Ranger um, in Friday the 13th. I'm a big Night Ranger fan. I like Night Ranger. I didn't really discover them until late. I discovered Night Ranger watching a movie called Buggy Nights with my, my, Mike Wahlberg. Yeah, Mike Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg in Buggy Nights. Um, and there's a scene with Alfred Molina who plays this kind of gangster type character mm -hmm. at the end and he's playing the song Sister Christian by Night Ranger and he's throwing these firecrackers around at the it's, same it's his time. Little, his little friend, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, what is this song? This is great. Anyway, found out it was Night Ranger. Fast forward to sort of 15, 20 years or whatever it was, I think. And me and my dad went to see them in the UK about two or three years ago and had a blast. They were fantastic live. Um, that's not the film. Boogie Nights isn't the film, obviously, that I'm going to mention, but it made an appearance in the opening, the excellent opening 20 minutes of the Friday the 13th remake, the best 20 minutes of the film. After mm -hmm. that 20 minutes, all kind of downhill from there. But that t first 20, 22 minutes or whatever of the of Friday the 13th remake from 2009 is fantastic. And they use that Night Ranger song in that those first 20 minutes. It works really well. Uh, where the guy's going through the woods looking for the weed. Um, so, yeah, so Sister Christian and Night Ranger. Yeah, I mean, we, you and I gushed over where we did our um, best and worst of, and we said mm. that was the best, like you just said, it was the best part yeah, of, yeah. Uh, of that movie. That was the opening 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, good choice. Uh, my next one is going to be Rob Zombie in The Bride of Chucky and Living Dead Girl. Uh, seeing Jennifer Tilly's plump ass as she's walking away after killing the security guard or the cop and she's rebuilding Chucky through the credits with the living dead girl that album uh, when he came out when he went solo that just it just blew up yeah. it's an excellent excellent album uh, of a solo project and uh, I just I love living dead girl to this day mm. I love that song yeah oh, good track Good Great. track. Although Dragula is still my favorite track of his. Yes. I love that song. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Love. Well, actually, the whole album is fantastic. It's great. Yeah. 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 All right. Your next one. Okay. So I'm going to do um, next. I'm just looking at my list now. It's changes. It's changing as I'm looking at it, you know. And I'm as you were thinking in, what, in other yeah. movies, too. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to, I, in fact, let's get this one out of the way because people are going to complain in the comments that we didn't mention this one. This isn't one I've chosen, but let's just mention as an honorable Dokken and the Dream Warriors because yes. that seems to be at the top yep. of everybody's list a lot of the time. So, yeah, Dokken, Dream Warriors from Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Um, we said it. I like the song. It just didn't make my list, unfortunately. It's uh, a good song, ladies and gentlemen. It is. It's not. It's nothing that Darren and I are tapping our foots to with the rest of uh, uh, the uh, rest of the 
music on our list like hellraiser by ozzy um <laughs> but it's on it's it's we have to so we covered the big three didn't we we <laughs> did we covered michael we covered freddie now we covered and we covered jason so we're we're, we're covered there but go ahead yeah. continue um i'm gonna say uh he's back the man behind the mask by alice cooper this was the song that got me into rock music I remember watching Friday the 13th Part 6 on, on VHS because I didn't see it at the cinema, unfortunately. I was too young. Um, and this track came on on the end credits. I thought, this is interesting. But at the same time, we had a TV show that ran through the night called The Power Hour, which was mm. all the latest rock tracks from America, the, vi- the music videos. And it showed continuously, every time it was on, the video for... Uh, he's back, the man behind the mask, which Jason was actually in that video. Uh, and I'd never heard of Alice Cooper before. I think I might have heard the song Schools Out. And it prompted me to go to a local record store the next day and buy the Alice Cooper Constrictor CD, which has, I think, three tracks from from Jason Lives on there. Great American Success Story, Teenage Frankenstein, and he's back, the man behind the mask. Yeah, And yeah, from then on, I was just sold on rock music. So... Um, Big, big, um, big, big track for me. And Alice Cooper is, uh, I think everyone can concur, that is a metal god. In fact, he's playing in London this week, um, which is amazing. I mean, guy must be, what, in his 70s now or something? I remember when he was going to fight somebody in uh, WrestleMania. <laughs> Jake the Snake. <laughs> it was Jake the Snake. He was with, yeah, he was with Jake the Snake, and uh, he was going to fight somebody, but he looked like someone's skinny old grandmother up there <laughs> <laughs> against these... <laughs> kind of wrestlers uh yeah uh, i agree with you I, I love teenage frankenstein as well uh my next one is ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna get sweat sweaty and i'm gonna get huffing and puffing here in a minute because darren knows it's my favorite scene in the movie and i gotta put the song in it it's given it up give it up by evelyn champagne king in fright night in the club scene oh uh, God, if I could serenade and seduce every woman with this song that I meet, I would. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> See, I, I'm getting, I'm getting even. Darren's room is getting too hot with me take, uh, talking <laughs> well, about lights this. Lights are dying. Yeah, his lights here. are dying out because it's getting all. <laughs> uh, we're getting all hot and bothered with it. But everyone knows how much I love this movie, especially that scene. So just check out our fright, best and worst of Fright Night, and I go on and on about it. Um, so okay Darren your next one because <laughs> I'm going to have a moment of silence here for a moment if I keep talking about it um, I have to choose um, Don't Fear the Reaper from Halloween yes you um, have to. Yeah. and the way that it um, the way that it slots into the film when they are driving through the streets on their way to babysit and just as the music kind of just as the chorus kind of kicks in on the song you get Michael turn the corner and, and start to follow them and it just fits perfectly with the um, with the with the tone of the film the lyrics as well don't fear the reaper mm-hmm. uh, and also what's going on on screen so every time I watch that movie and I see that moment I just think you knew exactly what you were doing there um, yeah. the timing of the music and the actual you know the 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 cat and mouse moment that's going on Let's be honest. Um, was this the first song you th- you thought of when you did this list? Yeah, mine too. Yeah, I, it yeah. had to be on there, and it was either that or I was thinking of the Coupe de Ville's when they were actually in the car as well. <laughs> you can't even make <laughs> out what they're singing. Let's go, sha na na na, bop she bop. I don't know what the fuck are you saying, John, or whoever's singing. You or Tommy, whatever. Uh, yes, yeah, but, no, yeah, but I know exactly what you mean. And don't fear and it, the reaper. Oh, it was. It was either that or the man behind the mask. Um, and yeah. you know, unfortunately or fortunately, don't the blue oyster cult won out on that one. Yeah, more cowbell. Mm. And I've uh, seen them do that live as well, which was terrific. And it's probably 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 sound fantastic they're a great band and a lot yeah. heavier in um uh than, than that song would suggest you know the again i saw them with my dad a few years ago and and um they the godzilla song that they do is great fun mm, mm. yeah one of the one of the uh one of the few bands that started the whole metal genre 
mm. then with oh, black yeah. sabbath and uh you know the few others there um okay my next one is probably so obscure that no one's going to know about it especially you darren uh but it's out there and it's catchy it's an intro with claymation uh about an anthology uh movie of different stories taking these old grim fairy tales and twisting them a little bit and that is the theme from uh dead time stories uh you probably I, never I, heard I, of, I have heard of it have you heard of dead time I have stories heard of dead time stories jeffrey yes. delman uh, uh who's who jeffrey worked on Dahmer? Yeah, him too. Um, <laughs> it's an autobiography. Uh, you know, it's uh, Jeffrey Delman was the second unit on part two of Friday the Thirteenth. Mm. Made his own movie, Dead Time Stories, uh, taking like you know the Three Little Pigs or like Goldilocks and twisted it into shit. And I just remember the intro and the guy singing about all these different types of uh, uh, grim fairy tales that he grew up with and how it twisted his mind. And as he's flipping through the pages, the human hand becomes a wolf hand. The wolf hand becomes a lizard hand. The lizard hand becomes a robot hand. It's great fun and a catchy tune. My God, yeah. Dead Time Stories theme. I Dead seem to remember the, the VHS of this film in the UK was like it's a, a book, right? 3D embossed yes. like book cover or something. Yeah, and it was like a plastic embossed cover. Or so. mm -hmm. I, I, I can picture it now in kind of like all sorts of green and yellow colors or something. That's the, what I'm remembering. The chorus goes, um, it's no wonder why I turned out like I did, remembering the Dead Times tales as a kid. That's the mm -hmm. chorus. And he's talking about how the three little pigs, you know, were being stalked by the wolf, and he grew up on Hitchcock and King. It's a great tune, great tune. Excellent. Um, I'm I, away at it. I love the fact that you've cho you've thought out of the box and gone for all these kind of obscure little kind of old fashioned numbers and everything, whereas I'm just stuck in the eighties with all this crappy hair rock, and, <laughs> <laughs> and the men look prettier than the women, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> hairspray. Yeah. Uh, do you have your final one? <laughs> that was it. Don't fear the reaper. It. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. You must my, have had more than ten. Uh, my final one. I had to put it in because it's a song that was particularly for the made particularly for the soundtrack, uh, and it's by one of my favorite thrash metal bands of all time, and one of the final one of the I guess one of the Fab Four of metal, um, and that's Anthrax. Anthrax, yeah, singing Bordello of Blood from the <laughs> title of the same name from Tales oh, from the Crypt. Tales from the Crypt. Oh, Darren, this metal song, this thrash metal song is so good. It's so perfect. Anthrax <laughs> is excellent. And this song just goes to prove how excellent they are. It's a great, great thrash metal song. I can't get enough of it every time I hear it. <laughs> oh, it's a terrible movie, you know, but it's 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 not like Demon Knight. No, uh, Demon Knight was great fun. Oh, oh, but Darren, Anthrax, Bordello Blood. Oh, <laughs> my God. I prefer Indians, but yeah, I'll go with Bordello of Blood. I quite We're like that song. We're talking movies. We're talking movies. <laughs> no, I mean the song Indians by Anthrax. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I prefer Indians. <laughs> um, well, you do like a good curry. I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did. I did leave one out, and it was Ooh. further back. And I'm going to mention it now. There's actually two songs uh, as okay. one, and we did an episode on this a few months ago. Now, uh, "Trick or Treat" uh, by Fastway from the school ball scene um, when he's kind of like tapping his foot, and the crowd are clapping, and then he he breaks into that riff and everything. It was terrific. And I also love the opening theme as well. That guitar riff in the opening theme is superb, and the song's called "Stand Up." Uh, and it really gets you in the mood for the movie, as uh, you know, at the start. Uh, so, yeah, Fastway's uh, Trick or Treat album is superb and uh, definitely deserves to be on my list. And another hair metal album. There you go. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, I think these, if we put these 10, 11 songs from each, 22, 20, on a CD, I think we have a pretty good uh, uh, movie tune uh, album here. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how someone's. Someone driving with their convertible down to tiptoe to the tulips is kind of 
<laughs> be kind of weird, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we want to find out, ladies and gentlemen, what are your favorite uh, tunes from horror movies? There's a there's a lot out there. We're just going to get a, a list list. of 50, 60 people all going, dock and dock and dock and dock and dock. <laughs> Colin Murdy will just throw an Alice Cooper on there. Yeah, yeah. There'll be, there'll be something that Colin likes, I'm sure. Yeah. Darren, we got a lot of stuff coming up. We have. Hopefully, this is going to go out before our quiz, which is Saturday the 28th of May. Um, hopefully tomorrow, because I'm planning on getting this out Friday night. Um, so, yeah. All of you that uh, uh, that enjoyed our stream last week, we had a lot of viewers for our stream last week, which was an impromptu one. Join us for um, the quiz on on Saturday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, two p.m. EST, seven p.m. Uh, British Summer Time. We've got six contestants, all answering eleven questions, ten horror questions, and one kind of game changer question that will gather you a lot of points. Hard and ones. It, hard ones, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. And also, you'll be able to play along in the chat as well, because we'll be on a slight delay. There's a set amount of time each person has to answer their questions. So feel free to play along in the chat, and we'll kind of dip in and out of that as well and, and, and get some of the answers from the chat room. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We've done this thing. This will be the third time we've done it before, and it's always been a, a good success for us. Yeah, yeah. And it's not going to... We, we, we can't fit everything into an hour, so it's going to be a little bit longer than that. So, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. money's worth. <laughs> money's worth right here. And it's live. And so it's live. The fun. Yeah. And it's live. Who knows what's going to happen. Uh, but before we go, we have one Patreon shout-out to do, which is a, a gentleman who joined us this week called John Hefner. Um, so thank you, John, for joining. I've seen you comment in the um, on the YouTube videos now and again, and it's uh, it's great to have you with us to continue this journey that we're on and this building this campaign up. Yeah, welcome, John. It's good to have you part of the family. Mm -hmm. uh, so on that note, as Darren and I are going to dip out and rock, <laughs> I'll put on a wig, you know, and go up there with Kelly a little bit. Darren, I don't know what you're going to do, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm uh, yeah, I'm going to shave my head. <laughs> <laughs> and, on the, and on that note, and on that note, and on that note, I stuttered there for a moment there. Yeah, try again. <laughs> I'll try it again. <laughs> on that note, ladies and gentlemen, as always, stick to the roads. And the best of luck. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Lemmy sang it. Should I get an Aussie cutout? <laughs> <laughs>